Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today we are going to talk about and I'm going to show you how you can take your FlySky transmitter or probably any transmitter and take it and make it so that the throttle stick is is no longer self-centering. So this one is actually fine, um, but if you buy, if you accidentally buy one of these transmitters and the 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 throttle stick, which is usually on the left here, um, and if it is centering kind of like this stick over here, I'm going to show you how you can fix that without having to order any spare parts as long as you have a couple simple items on hand. So let's get into it. Alright, the items that you're going to need are going to be a couple of small coarse screws like these. We'll talk about the specific size in a moment. You're going to need uh, some sort of plastic, I think, or possibly aluminum like from a can. And this is a, the lid of a uh, Tupperware container. And then you'll also need basic tools like maybe some, some pokey kind of tools some screwdriver type tools, maybe some small plier type tools. And that's about it. So we got our radio here, and then what we're gonna do is, uh, actually let's get some sort of cloth that we can put the radio down on when we turn it over so that we don't mess with our gimbals. And we are going to take out four screws from the back of the radio here, 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 and here. Oh, also, before you do this, make sure that you empty your battery compartment and take the batteries out. So we're going to take those screws off and then the top will kind of pop off like this. I've already done that so that way you don't have to sit here watching me take screws out. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and pause the video and I will eventually get this to come off of here. Just kind of, kind of, I guess it kind of clicks in place. It's a little pain, bit of a pain. Come on, little fellow. Wait, hang on. I know how to fix this. There we go. Okay, just, ooh, yep, well, that's fine. Okay, if this falls out, that's okay. We can put that back on. Okay, woo, look at this, and here we have this. So if you've never seen this before, you are in for a treat. Oh, okay, hang on, first of all, so yours won't come off like that. This one, I have already unplugged these wires, and these wires go right, these wires go right here. So unplug the power wire from there, and be careful, you might need to hold this little, the little uh, port down so that it doesn't get pulled up. Maybe use some pliers for that to gently remove it and then remove this plug from over there. And then once you do that, just set this piece aside because we uh, we don't need it right now. Actually, we won't need it at all. Ooh, look at this. So here we have all the insides, all the good stuff. We got all our fancy electronical things. We have our gimbals here. Now, this transmitter uh, is a, this is set up as a mode two. So we have, um, elevator, aileron, and we have our yaw or rudder, and then here we have our throttle. Now you can see that here we have this metal band over where the where the throttle movement is as I move the throttle up and down, and that is to provide friction for the throttle. So um, unlike the, uh, well all of the other controls, there's a little spring, I'm not sure if you can, yeah there you go, there's that little spring, and as I move it, it causes a spring uh, to, uh, it pulls on the spring to make tension, which is actually a pretty cool design. Um, and same over here. So what I'm going to do to show you this is, and these gimbals, as far as I can tell, are identical. They're just, they're just kind of reversed in, their, in the way that they put them in here. So what I'm going to do to show you how to do this is I'm actually going to use my right gimbal so my, my right hand gimbal looking at it from this side, which it would normally be the elevator aileron gimbal to show you how to do this for your uh, throttle gimbal, okay? So you'll notice right here, uh, there's, we have this little ridge, or this little plastic piece that has ridges on it. And as I move the elevator, which is gonna be what your throttle is, um, that moves with it. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to make, I've already made this one here, but I've, we're going to make a plastic piece that goes over the top of this little, uh, this little kind of semi-circular deal here and screws into there and there, just like how this metal thing is over here to provide tension. But the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we are going to remove the spring here 
that go that provides tension for this. So if your if your throttle has a, a tension spring, we need to remove that. And that is this little spring right here. Oh, it just went out of focus. There we go. And there's a couple ways you can do that, but one is going to be this screw right here. By the way, all for all of these adjustments, this is how you adjust the spring tension. So if you want more tension, you tighten the screw, and then if you want less tension, you turn it down. Just be careful to not lose these, you know, parts and stuff. Once I have loosened the screw enough, I can just pull it out like so and caref being careful that it doesn't just fly everywhere and then you'll see down below it we've got this ooh, so we have this piece so that you see the spring just came off of this little um, this little part here that's kind of the top part that the spring holds on to we're gonna set that aside and then we have this little spring part right down here and I'm just gonna pluck that out of there and it just kinda hooks onto this this little bar right down there and uh, which we're also gonna take out so in order to do that, there's two ways we can do that. The hard way would be to try and remove this little connector because it's like glued in there and then undo these screws right here and then pull this little thing up. That would probably be the best way, but this it's glued on here so much that I'm concerned about pulling off this little connector from this board and everything's moving and it's just not very stable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove these two screws and carefully pull up this side of the gimbal and that will give us enough room to pull this thing out. Not the best method, but um, probably the least likely to screw something up. So now I will now I will just take out these two screws. Small movements. I'm gonna go on this other side and actually push the gimbal up from the bottom. There we go. And then you can see, so we can pull this up enough. And then now we can try and let me get some small pliers and actually just pull out this little piece right here we should have enough room if we kind of wiggle it just right to get it out let me see here now just be careful because you don't want to put too much stress on the parts and then cause them to break so now so I was able to pull the gimbal in, towards my thumb a little bit and then uh, get this piece out. So you can see why it was so difficult to take out because it has this like half moon kind of shape there. So take that out, carefully pop the gimbal back in place, little wiggles, small jiggle movements. There we go, okay. And if you don't take out that bar, it will cause the gimbal to seize up during certain uh, operations because the bar will get in the way. So now, well, we're gonna put these screws back in here. So again, your gimbal may be kind of the opposite of this one, because it's probably gonna be on this side. You can see that we have, the gimbal is, is free, it's not self-centering, but it's so loose that it just falls right down. So we need to put some tension on there. So now we're gonna get our piece of plastic, and I'll just go ahead and take these holes, because this seemed to work pretty well, so let me just get the measurements. One and a half inches, 38 millimeters. Let me just give you a width measurement here. About a quarter inch. Six or seven millimeters is kind of what you want, because it needs to not get in the way of the gimbal. Leave yourself some extra room on the ends, where you have the holes so that uh, so that it doesn't tear off so let's see right about right about one and a half inches maybe just a hair beyond that and now I'll just get something to kind of open up the hole so that it will fit the screw that we're gonna be putting in here and now we're gonna need our little screws here and these are like I guess you might call these sheet metal screws these might be servo screws might work if they're large enough but really they just need to be large they need to have a coarse thread so that they're self tapping and uh, which means that we just don't we don't need to have um, we don't need to have threads into whatever it is that we're screwing them into and they just need to be able to fit in this hole they don't have to be super deep but they need to be able to fit in here and uh, and be snug enough so that we can basically tighten them in and um, you know because we don't have threads we're just screwing them straight into this soft plastic now I will go ahead and trim off the excess here I'm gonna leave some room some room there screw the screw into the little piece of plastic 
And then I'm going to screw this one into here. And it, they might, it might be a little stiff at first if you haven't put any screws into this little post. Screw this one in place here. The way that I did this, there's not quite enough room for the actual gimbal to move. I need to trim that on the edges. But I think actually the screws, there's more material on the left side than the right side. So I've just swapped it around. So I'm just going to try that again here. Yeah, we actually have just enough room. I think I, I do actually want to trim this a little bit. I'm actually, to make it simple, I'm actually just going to get my exacto blade and just trim carefully ooh, carefully trim a little piece so that we have a little bit more clearance because you can see it's pretty tight so now it's already it's already working pretty good it's not falling down and then what we can do is we can just tighten this tighten the screws down just a little bit and then that will adjust the tension on here so now this is actually pretty good like I mean it's this is my normal throttle right here and this one I mean it feels feels just as good <laughs> which maybe that just says something about fly sky's quality but um, yeah so there you go the, the now we can uh, we have a totally functional uh, non centering throttle and you know I mean just just make sure you did a good job here and that it's not gonna you know snap there it's not really gonna wear out it shouldn't wear out there's not much uh, I mean it shouldn't wear out too quickly because there's not really much tension going on here so as long as you have a decent amount of of room and and area for that plastic to hold on to you're golden you're good to go when you put the back piece back on remember to plug in the plug here and here hey thanks for watching if you like this video give it a like uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't because I love making videos like this so there's gonna be a lot more to come and if you have any uh, uh, comments about this or any tips for people that are doing this uh, leave them in the comments below thanks for watching I'll see you next time <laughs>